How did home get detached from homeless? How did homelessness get unlinked from our humanity, our humanness? And unhoused humans are no longer seen. How did cleaning, meaning eradicating unhoused bodies from your cities, become a politrickster catchphrase? Or an anti-poor people's hate-filled saying? How did our life without a roof get unlinked with the truth? How did our life without a roof get unlinked with the truth? Of eviction, displacement, gentrification, and elders and babies constantly being removed. As politricksters across stolen cities come up with policies to lock in poor and indigenous people's poverty, I have to ask, how did homeless get unlinked with homes? And how did humans lose the right to be homed? The proposed encampment management policy of Oakland would ban tents from within 150 feet of schools and no more than 50 feet from homes, businesses, playgrounds, parks, and other recreation areas. As some Oakland city leaders put it, the homeless camp problem is out of control. On this message, on this palabra, on this mensaje from a poverty scholar to everyone, this formerly unhoused, incarcerated single mama for my homelessness will be delivering a brief herstory lesson into the eradication and destruction and commodification of safe places to rest and transformation of a place with abundance to a land filled with poverty, scarcity, incarceration, and thousands of people on the street who are no longer considered human, but instead the capitalist defined object fueled with greed called homelessness. And this is a special for Indigenous Peoples Day. To all my fellow brothers and sisters, indigenous brothers and sisters on these stolen streets today. Number one, settler colonial lies of discovery transformed an abundant indigenous territory known as Turtle Island into incarceration nation in five short centuries. And so locked in the lie that Mama Earth should be sold to the highest bidder, rented for profit and hoarded for wealth acquisition of those few with the complexion protection and the ones who wanted to be them. Number two, imperial armies, endless colonizer wars all across Mama Earth, borders, fences, and walls everywhere, creating the lie of citizenship, forcing people into one area with papers and licenses and false government treaties and paper entities if we were seen as lighter, whiter, or more worthy or deserving. Number three, public, not really ever housing, a.k.a. poor people housing, projects to some of us dismantled almost as quickly as they were created. Beginning with the New Deal, set up as a scarcity model to begin with, helping only some people, the so-called deserving poor, which were white widows of war veterans, pushed and nudged by more racist, classist legislation throughout the decades, and then slowly but surely, intentionally, including some and then every poor people of color and becoming ghettos for all of us, and then slowly 
intentionally blighted, stolen from, criminalized, polarized, predated on, disrespected, talked about us without us, and then sold on the stock market officially in 2013 to private nonprofiteers to be dismantled forever. So now, no poor people's housing as we knew it exists in the United Snakes in 2020. Moving on to real estate snaking, bankster paper trails, equity theft, gentrification, and literally thousands, millions on the streets, mostly elders and disabled peoples and families with children like me, unable to get back in our family homes, in our family apartments, in our rooms, in our SROs. And then the evil private property ownership of Mama Earth and the lie of rent. Flagrant scam lording, evicting, harassing, and adjudicating us all out of roofs like me and Mama were from my childhood. And lastly, but definitely not leastly, the ways that notions of success, sanity, normalness are equated with land hoarding, resource stealing, and deep, violent poverty shame linking with the lack of those things. Backed up by the therapy industrial complex notions of abnormal, their complicit acceptance and encouragement of the aloneness, isolation, and individualism, and the ways that endless productivity are required to keep the lie of rent going. And now, here we are. In all these pandemics of poverty and polarized terror and COVID with people facing the violence of evictions and currently being evicted. Over a hundred families this jailhouse lawyer has advocated for just in the last six months. Notwithstanding the toothless and truthless eviction moratoriums and politricsters speak of nothing but more evicting, removing, displacing dismantling humans like me who've been turned inhuman because of our homelessness and poverty. So us houseless poverty scholars are left with the same question we were asking when elders like Iris Canada, Ron Lickers, Lelaine Turner, and so many more were faced with sheriffs at our collective doors evicting us from our roofs that we all had before we were homeless. This question, where do we go? As you can all overstand and understand, we were all housed. Just like many of you reading, listening to this podcast currently are. We were all housed before we were unhoused. But this simple fact doesn't get spoken about enough. Let's all say it together. We were all housed before we were homeless. We are all humans, even if we don't have access to a roof. We aren't a thing or a problem or a campaign or a legislation or a legislation or a law. We aren't an encampment or a tent or a hefty bag. We are humans suffering behind the violence of poverty in this stolen land. To unpack the multiple ways our inhumanness is locked in. Even our residency in a city or town or area is not actually considered legitimate. In many places across the country, if you have no fixed address code for a roof attached, you are not considered a resident with rights to vote, receive mail, or your checks. All of these acts of violence are deeply related to the original stealing fathers, I mean founding fathers, classist, racist, bloody paper trailed process to steal land and resources and force millions of indigenous enslaved and bordered peoples into forever poverty. 
and implement the lie of rent and commodification of Mama Earth, which is one of the many reasons I believe that homelessness needs to be included, linked, and connected to indigenous land stewardship on this indigenous people's day. One of the many reasons us poor black, brown, indigenous, and unhoused poor white people at homefulness follow the stewardship of indigenous land liberators like Segorite Land Trust and the Zapatistas in Chiapas, Movimiento Sin Tierra in Brazil. We have no homes in a stolen land system rooted in greed and theft. And we need to go back to the idea of what is home in the first place. And how does lack of access to a roof mean you are no longer privileged with the right to rest as comrades from Western Regional Advocacy Project RAP have named it? And how people in their desire for Starbucks likes landscapes of nothingness Absence of peoples and things means clean. And that all peoples, even colors and cultures, share this anti-poor people hate. Or this complicit, soft hate of seeing the homeless. Or like politrickster Noel Gallo often says... (laughs) the homeless problem. Or my other favorite reference to unhoused humans, this homeless problem has gotten out of control. Mm. Actually, I think some other things have gotten out of control. Like the enabling, causing, legislating, legislating, stealing more and more of Mama Earth for profit. Yeah, that's out of control because your greed and stolen land lies are out of control. That your politrickster and private property owners continue to be complicit or explicit in the raping, desecrating, hoarding, and selling of a mama earth. That public land in this stolen indigenous territory has never been for all the public That the scam lord system is protected and killed for by endless paper laws and poll license security guards. That permit gangsters charge exorbitant fees and backroom deals to houseless builders like us at homefulness trying to unsell Mama Earth. That sacred indigenous sites continue to be used for recreation and capitalist greed. That the lie of rent and profiting off of people's roofs is held in place with occupying armies who carry guns called sheriffs and courts and judges and everyone else surviving on that stolen dime. That people think it's a sign of success to hoard more and more of Mama Earth. That people faced arrest just to rest. That the only solution these politricksters seem to have our outdoor cages, like in San Francisco and St. Petersburg, occupied Yalamu and Seminole Territory. The people, humans, that live and breathe and eat and thrive and dream and think are arrested for living and breathing and eating and thinking and walking and living while houseless. The encampment bands, like the sleeping bands of The last few years in Frisco are another way to dehumanize, criminalize, and incarcerate people for our poverty. And as we rethink the thousands of missionary and colonial lives of Columbus, yeah, let's say the rapists and pedophiles' name, can we also recognize the false gods of hoarding, land stealing, and evicting from land that was never yours in the first fucking place? Poor Magazine, Homefulness and Decolonized Academy, Houseless Indigenous Bordered and Poor Youth and Elders will be releasing a statement today, Indigenous Peoples Day, condemning the encampment bans on stolen land. Please consider standing with us, signing on. 
And thank you all for listening with your hearts and your souls and your uncolonizing minds. Tell you something, all that glitters and gold. Hey, hey, it's been a long old trouble, long old troublesome road. And I'm looking for somebody coming help.